When I woke up this morning, a little tired from these last two days, I felt like a coach before a big game. I had butterflies. And I think, hopefully, you're as excited as I am for what is about to happen. As 29 of you will receive the sacraments. Six of you tonight will be baptized. And you will begin your journey as Catholics. Some of you unexpectedly are here and probably never thought that the day before April Fools, you would be baptized a Catholic. <laughs> if someone told you that last year on April 1st, you would have said, you're joking. But God, as it said in the scriptures tonight, if you listen to those five readings, and by the way, if you're not Catholic, that was a short version. <laughs> Our normal mass is five hours if you want to become Catholic. No, it's only on Easter Vigil. But it says, God's ways are not our ways, saith the Lord. So tonight I want to meditate on three things. First, baptism. The beginning of the journey. Confirmation, strength for the journey. And Eucharist, food for the journey to heaven. Why are you here? Basically, you want to go to heaven. And you found the way, which is through the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. The one church that Jesus instituted when he was pierced on the side with the lance. And he said in Matthew 16, Upon you, Peter, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against. And here we are in 2018, still strong. And tonight, because Jesus died and rose from the dead through the priest myself, you will be confirmed new life in baptism, six of you. And all 29 of you will be strengthened to keep your baptismal promises and strength and fed for the first time with Jesus' body and blood. So first, baptism. The waters of baptism set you free from the curse of original sin and sin. And we saw in Exodus tonight that the Israelites were set free from Egypt. And they crossed the Red Sea. And then the Egyptians changed their mind and went after them. And God told Moses to stretch his hands over the waters of the Red Sea to put his staff on it. And it says, as the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charities of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. But the Israelites had marched on dry land. Thus, the Lord saved Israel on that day. Today, the six of you here on the front are being saved by baptism. In one of my favorite books called Priest for the New Millennium by Cardinal Dolan, he was a priest at the time when he wrote the book, he told a story about when he was a young priest, a younger priest. And during Holy Week, because he had a job working in D.C., not in teaching, he didn't have a parish. And so he would go work with the missionaries of charity, Mother Teresa's order. And according to the story, you know, on Good Friday, like we did last night, they would all kiss the cross. But then there were, he, worked, he went to this place where they uh, helped patients dying with AIDS and severe cancer, mostly men. And so they, the sisters, the, the Mother Teresa's nuns, asked him to take the crucifix to the beds of the men that could not get out of bed because they were so weak and sick. And he was brought to one very emaciated man who was beckoning him to come over. But the sisters warned him that he should be careful because this man was very violent and he had tried to bite some of the sisters at times. But Father Dolan thought, what should I do as a priest? And he went over and he brought the cross to the man. The man grasped the crucifix and kissed the face of the crucified Lord. Then he lay back exhausted and went back to sleep. The next day on Holy Saturday, the sisters called Father Dolan 
And the aunt told him that the man wanted to see him again. So he went back to the hospice, went to his room, and the man told him, I want to be baptized. So Father Dolan asked him to explain his desire to be baptized. And he says, I know nothing about Christianity or the Catholic Church. I hated religion all of my life. All I do know that I've been here for three months dying, and these sisters are always happy. When I curse them, they look at me with compassion in their eyes. Even when they clean up after me, they are smiling. When they spoon feed me, there is radiance in their eyes. All I know is they have joy and I don't. When I ask them why they're so happy, all they say is Jesus. I want this Jesus. Baptize me and give me Jesus. Give me joy. Father Dolan said, I've never heard a better explanation of the power of Christian joy. He was baptized that day and died that morning, Easter morning at 3.15 a.m. Sent home to God. What happened to that man? He was saved by the waters of baptism. He began his journey towards heaven. And every single sin, including original sin, was washed clean. All I can say is, RJ, you are one lucky man. <laughs> when he found out he didn't have to go to confession, he went like this, literally. <laughs> His wife wanted him to go to confession, but it would all be washed clean. But you know, it's just the beginning, not the end of the journey. Especially for you six that are being baptized and the rest of you that are coming into the Catholic faith and those that are being confirmed. You know, too many times, especially with the eighth grade confirmation classes, when they go through, you know, all this stuff in eighth grades and then they get confirmed, they just, they, like they graduate and you don't see them to get married again. As if they got their deponent, see ya. That's not what confirmation's about. Baptism is the beginning. Confirmation strengthens you to fight. When I was ordained a priest, I remember distinctly after my Mass of Thanksgiving at St. John the Baptist Church, my home parish, I overheard uh, Father Ron Gillis, a very saintly priest who has gone back to the Lord. And he went to my mother. I heard my mother say, oh, he finally made it. He's finally uh, finished the journey. And I... And he was smiling, but then Father Ron kind of got serious on my mom. And he wagged his finger and said, Maureen, the battle has just begun. And for you, the battle has just begun. And that's why I confirm you. I will put on all 29 of you chrism oil on your forehead. And I will say to you, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. St. Jose Maria Escriva says, If you see your way clearly, follow it. Why don't you shake off the cowardice that holds you back? And when I confirm you with that sacred oil, that chrism oil, God is giving you by the power of the Holy Spirit the grace to shake off all cowardliness. And to be his soldier. The chrism oil represents the strength of the Holy Spirit. And in the Old Testament, priests, prophets, and kings were anointed with chrism oil, with sacred chrism. A priest, a priest makes sacrifices for his people. A prophet speaks God's truth. And a king leads his people in battle. And everyone who's baptized and everyone is in this church is a priest, a prophet, and a king. All of you are called to be that. You know, I know this. As I preach here in this church and we're praising God, the devil is in the parking lot doing push-ups. Amen? Amen? He doesn't like what he sees here. 29 people receiving their first communion. And that's why you are confirmed God needs you to be warriors 
for Christ. You notice my new vestment. Looks pretty cool, huh? My mom made it. Mom's great, isn't she? Sacred Heart in the front and my friend Michael in the back. And check this out. Desert Storm Camo underneath. <laughs> to remind me that as a priest, I am always in battle for my people. Jim Caviezel, who had a conference, a young people focus conference, he had a very powerful speech, and I'd like to relate some of the words he told these college students. He said, we must shake off this indifference, this destructive de tolerance of evil, but only our faith and the wisdom of Christ can save us. He said, but it requires warriors ready to risk their reputations, their names, even their very lives to stand for the truth. He says, set yourselves apart from this corrupt generation. Be saints. You weren't made to fit in. You were born to stand out. Brothers and sisters, your life changes dramatically tonight. You don't fit in anymore. You're not in the cool club anymore. You're now Catholic. And you're a strong Catholic. Not a cafeteria Catholic. They're not Catholic. But those that believe everything the church teaches to be true and given to us by God, Jesus Christ. That's what you're promising today in front of me and all these people. That everything God teaches is true. In a world that rejects truth. And God will give you the grace, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, strengthen you with them in a moment. And it will come out when you need it. He will give you the gift of piety to get up and go to Mass. And that grace will kick in in July when you're at Ocean City. And you wake up and the beach is calling you. And you tell your kids, Mass first. And they start whining and you say, get your shoes on and you drag them to the church. That is piety. The gift of fortitude will kick in when you hear someone mock God's holy name and you tell them, what did Jesus do to you? Why do you use his name as a cuss word? Don't say it like that. Say, blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. The Holy Spirit will kick in with you when you're afraid to have another child and you refuse out of love for God to use birth control in your marriage and you are fruitful and multiply. You will get the gift of understanding when you do not cease to learn your faith and you continue to soak it in with reading. Grab anything that's good and read it. St. Jose Maria says, Do not neglect your spir spiritual reading. Reading has made many saints. you got to feed the mind. you got to allow the Holy Spirit to continue to cultivate this very rich faith. And i got news for you. Even though we had 20 weeks of boot camp, it's just the tip of the iceberg. I'm sure Father Sam agrees with me that we're still learning the faith, being a priest, after many years. The faith is so rich and it takes so long to master it. And you won't master it until you're in heaven. And tonight you're being commis commissioned as an officer in God's army. Fight. One of my favorite movies is Braveheart. And there's that epic scene where William Wallace is there trying to rouse this ragtag army to fight against the English. And there's that puny guy in the fourth row holding a hoe in his hand. And he says, fight against that. No, we'll run and we'll live. Don't be that guy in the fourth row. Be the guy on the horse with a sword, the sword of prayer. And fight. Remember that the Christian life is not about being nice. It's about being a fighter. 
And you can only experience the peace of Christ if you put up a fight. Now, how many know that are in here and been Catholic? It's only if you fight that you actually become holy. Amen? Amen. Yeah, see, the, the, they're a little lukewarm. Amen? Yeah. No, it's a fight. God will help you. And if you fall, which you will at times, get up. Just get up. And ask the grace of the Holy Spirit to begin again. If you sin, run to the merciful Father in confession, who will always take you back, as the Father did to the prodigal son. Again and again and again. Lou Holtz, who is the co was the coach for Notre Dame, and I'm not I'll spare you of how he used to speak. <laughs> but he said this. I don't know if you knew this, he was a practicing Catholic and a good one. The man went to daily mass. He says, sacrifice, discipline, and prayer are essential. We gain strength through God's word. We receive grace from the sacraments. And when we fumble due to sin, and it's going to happen, confession puts us back on the field. It puts you back on the field. And you just keep going. Now finally, food for the journey. Tonight, all of you, or most of you, will receive for the first time the Blessed Sacrament. And I wonder how that is as an adult. Most of us were in second grade. And I think I was excited, but probably, to be honest, I was more excited for the $100 bill I was going to get from my grandmother afterwards. <laughs> and I couldn't wait to get out of the tie and put my t-shirt on so I could ride my bike. I think the experience of communion was very short-lived with a second grade mentality. But you know, there were certain saints that actually did remember and cherish their first communion. And one is St. Therese of Lisieux. The little flower, she says this, I would not tell you everything, even if I could, for there are certain things which lose their fragrance in the open air, certain thoughts so intimate that they cannot be translated into earthly language without losing at once their deep and heavenly meaning. How lovely it was, that first kiss of Jesus in my heart. It was truly a kiss of love. I knew that I was loved and said, I love you and I give myself to you forever. I don't think that was my first communion. <laughs> but maybe it will be yours. Stay close to the Eucharist and you will conquer. It says in the responsorial psalm tonight, Then I will go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. St. Jose Maria has a beautiful line. He says, when you approach the tabernacle, remember that he has been waiting for you for 20 centuries. For 20 centuries, Jesus has been waiting for this moment that he could be in you. St. Maximilian Kolbe said, if angels could be jealous of men, they would be so for one reason, Holy Communion. Angels cannot receive the Eucharist, only men and women can. So tonight the angels are jealous of you. Because you get to receive him in your body and your soul. It's what feeds you for the fight. It's the most important thing you can do is receive communion in the state of grace. And I hope it's a memorable experience for all of you. And for all of us that are born Catholic, or maybe you've strayed away, God is calling you back. He wants you also to experience the freedom in Christ. And so for you six, you begin your life of Christ. For the others, all of you, you're strengthened tonight to be God's warriors. And all of us tonight, if we're properly disposed, will receive God's body and blood, soul and divinity. Why? Jesus rose from the dead. Death is not the end. 
God has conquered sin. He's conquered suffering. He's conquered death itself. Because he is alive. Someone say, Alleluia.